This right here is supposed to be an absolute banger of a series. It's time for a best of three of Protoss versus Zerg that was played during this week's ESO Open Cup for the South Korean server. Game number one, we find ourselves on the map Golden Aura. And spawning right here in the top left hand corner, playing with the red Protoss pieces, we have none other than Classic going for what seems to be a Stargate opener. And his opponent in the opposite corner, the man fresh out of the South Korean military with the blue Zerg pieces. He goes by the name of Rogue. Rogue has been playing in pretty much everything. So in case you've missed the news, he just wrapped up his mandatory military service literally about a week or so ago at this point. And he's been playing in a ton of events. He seems to be... Yeah, really trying to grind that rust off of his Sawcraft gameplay as quickly as possible. And from what I've heard, he actually performs exceptionally well in this series, which is almost a little bit of a surprise to me. So here's the situation, right? About a week or so ago, I featured him when he went up against Nightmare. Now, at the time, spoiler alert for my own video, I guess. At the time, Nightmare managed to beat him 2-0. Two to zero. In my mind, Classic is one step up from Nightmare, and I don't mean that with any disrespect at all. Nightmare is one of Korea's best Protoss players, he's in like the top 25 in the world. But Classic, I mean, you're probably all very familiar with Classic, he is ranked amongst the very best. So, if Ro can already make that much of an improvement, right? Allegedly, I don't know, we're gonna have to find out together, but if he can make that much of an improvement within a week, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what the man can do if we give him uh, a couple of months here. But anyways, let's see. We have three overlords on the production tab. That's a little bit suboptimal here. He does have a Ling running around in the opponent's base, but I'm fairly certain he must have already seen the Oracle. Luckily right here though for Rogue, everything is pretty defensive for Classic. He's not really being too aggressive right now with that Stalker and the Oracle. Interesting beginning here, by the way, from the Protoss player using... An adapt into a Stalker into double Oracle here. The Stalker, eh, not usually super popular, but it's nice when you can kill the Overlord that is on top of the pillar. Maybe a Rogue, yeah. I mean, the meta in general seems to be like his uh, his biggest issue at this point in time, or at the very least it was a couple of days ago when I last looked at his games. He was playing some pretty outdated strategies, and there's also a bit of an Overlord meta, right? As far as like the positioning of the Overlord goes. And I think Classic must have seen that it was an easy one to pick off. Ooh, drone transfer over here, spotted. Yep, and just like that, seven drones down the drain. That is an issue. You cannot really afford losing seven drones and Overlord and three Zerklings for absolutely nothing. This is now also when those Adepts will start flying around. I guess the issue you run into, right? So there's a couple of problems that, that happen when you don't play the game for about a year and a half, or you rarely get to play the game in about a year and a half. Not only does the meta change, so just in general, even though the units may not go through a lot of changes, the meta does adjust depending on the maps, but also with players just simply, well, making uh, new discoveries as far as strategies go. And obviously in 2024, those changes are relatively small. Oh, we're gonna even go after the creep tumor here, okay. But on top of that, the pro gamers also keep pushing each other to new heights. So you fall behind in the meta, but you also fall behind in the sense that you have not been improving at the same rate as everybody else. You can't really compare modern StarCraft 2 in 2024, even with like, say like, 2019 StarCraft 2. Even though the game is, broadly speaking, not changed that much, pro gamers just keep pushing each other, and the skill level will keep going up, as long as, well, there's players playing at a competitive level. Very quick Hydra then right here for Rogue. So actually, just a straight up a blink follow-up with plus one attacks could be really dangerous. Looks like Classic has decided to leverage his way into a very quick fourth Nexus off of, yeah, just six gateways. But when you deal this much damage early on, so eight drones, then a bunch of lings as well. Uh, I mean, this is no plus one melee opener too. You could be in a lot of trouble against just a good old plus one blink stalker push. Okay, well, this is too much damage, isn't it? Yep, and this is, this is a good example of what I was trying to explain. Classic has really not done anything very different compared to what he would have done a year and a half ago. And yet he gets 12 drone kills. That's absurd, right? Like that is an insane amount of damage done. Now obviously, maybe he got a little bit lucky catching his opponent on the drone transfer, but... Yeah, if I'm being brutally honest with you, Rogue shouldn't be transferring drones at that exact moment in the game.
<laughs> Anyways, it's gonna be a infestation pit right now on the back of this, and it looks like we're just gonna cut a couple corners. So, if we're not making plus one melee, we're not going links. Obviously, the baneling nerf is the cause of that, but how in the world are you gonna hold this? I guess the main advantage here for Rogue is that there's a fourth nexus rather than two additional gateways in a robo facility. So there's no quick way to reinforce this. Yeah. And that will allow him to stay alive. I wonder if maybe Classic should have gone for a robo facility and some additional gateways. So he could quickly reinforce this. Light is at the end of the tunnel right now in the form of a lurker then together with a hive. So far though, good and important hold right here for Rogue. Still, though, no Stalker lost. Look at this micro here from Classic. I mean, he's gonna lose a Stalker here, I'm sure, very quickly, but... The value in the earlier stages of the game has been really good. At least if you're a fan of Protoss. Now, Lurkers are gonna make the defense a lot easier. Love the Stasis Wards on the back of this, too, by the way. Keeping those Oracles around for as long as possible is incredibly handy. Now, finally, do we get a... A robo facility on the production tab. So a war prism would be good. Any sort of mobile detection is also going to be a necessity. I guess there's still those oracles. They can obviously see lurkers as well with their revelation skill, but it's not as reliable as just a good old observer. Okay, well, here come the lurkers. Not bad. He does have four base economy. He did prioritize the gas over at the uh, the fourth base anyways. He doesn't have a lot of minerals there, but... Yeah, as long as he can make lurkers, he should be able to survive eventually. And there is gonna be a scary moment here for, for Classic. So there is gonna be a moment where Rogue is gonna have a tremendous amount of lurkers. I think he's just gonna keep adding them into the mix. He's gonna dump all of his gas into those bad boys and then... I think you can expect a full-on counter-attack here as well. So Classic is, I mean... Taking base after base after base. The entire left side of the map is now gobbled up by the Protals. Now, finally, are we going to go for at least a couple additional gases? He skipped the ones over at the third. So he wants to go for what seems to be Immortal Archon with full upgrades. Look at these upgrades as well, by the way. Plus three, plus two is really quick. Whereas, I think there's a bit of a timing attack coming up right here for Rogue. Even though this may not have been his original intention in this game, I think transitioning to watch a Lurker Den together with a Nidus Worm is really powerful. If you manage to get a bunch of Lurkers right over here, good luck breaking that with Blink Stalkers. Now he is target firing down the hatch. Okay, well that is effectively turning this, this attack here from the Zerk into a, an all-in. He can obviously remake it, but he's gonna have to deal substantial amounts of damage on the other side of the map in just a moment. If he does not, Classic is gonna just run away with the win. He is gonna be able to uh, out Zerk the Zerk at this rate pretty quick. Cheeky little spread right there on the Crypt Doomer. Didn't want to go too far down because then the Stalkers would get a free pick off. Yep, so Classic so far just absolutely outclassing Rogue here. Nothing absolutely terrible went down for Rogue, it's just that he played slightly worse at every aspect of the game. Now he still has a chance. Classic will still have to, oh my god. Okay, 18 lurkers with two more coming up. Classic still has to respect this. Zealot Warpin in the main base is gonna get rid of the Nidus Worm. And that is, I think, pretty much all she wrote. I think Rogue's best strategy now is just to go straight across the map. Okay, he's gonna try and do it again. Oh, Classic, Classic, Classic. Classic can't actually warp in units. Awkward moment, because he's pretty much maxed out. He doesn't really have an opportunity to warp in a ton of stuff. So the Nidus Worm over here is going to finish up. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna go for another Nidus in the main base. In the meantime, it looks like the Stalker Zealot Ball is... Well, ready to send it on the side of the Zerg. That does mean he's gonna fight into a bunch of Lurkers. Revelations here, though, are gonna reveal where those units are. Okay, more Lurkers are available on the other side of the map. I think he decided to unload them at home instead to try and stay alive. Classic has got a ton of money in the bank, by the way. So even though macro-wise he's been doing fantastically well, I'm a little bit afraid that he is not macroing quite as cleanly here as far as the resources gathered goes, right? So he, he gathered all of that money, but now he's not really able to spend it very comfortably. He does have Sonic Storm done, though. Lurkers in the main base, too. 
both rogue, rogue, rogue. Yeah, rogue is definitely somebody who will go for whatever it takes, right? It is important in a game of StarCraft to continuously come up with a win condition, even if you fall behind. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, I think he just found it. He's done so much damage now. Oh, it's so dirty. Yeah, the man has got a killer instinct. So it's so easy to get caught up with your own mistakes, right? You're like, oh man, I should have played this perfectly. To put yourself past that and to immediately come up within a matter of seconds with what your next best move is going to be is what Rogue is very good at. I tend to, when I play games of StarCraft 2, I, I tend to kind of linger on my mistakes for too long. And these are the type of games that make me realize that. Look at this. I think Rogue has just done it. His entire early game was a disaster. Then the Nidus Worms came in and clearly Classic missed a couple of rounds of warp-ins and suddenly Rogue obtains the victory. The scoreboard of this series so far may indicate otherwise, but I am pretty sure that Classic is still feeling comfortable. It's one of those things where like, yeah, you lost the game, but he was winning like the first 95% of that match, right? The only problem for Classic is that well, the last 5% are the only percentages that really matter. It's an awkward moment because he had vision of the natural expansion when the Nidus Worm popped up there, but he was maxed out. And obviously you can't warp in Zealots for the defense when you are maxed out. It's a weird luxury problem, you know? It's like when you uh, accidentally find yourself with a Rolls Royce and then you realize, I, I can't uh, afford the oil change. I don't know. I don't really know anything about cars, but I'm assuming if you own a fancy car like that, you can also afford the oil change, right? Anyways, weird situation right there for Classic. He was a little slow with sending those Zealots from the main base down towards that natural expansion. And then the second Knight is wearing, which should have been... It's like playing Whack-A-Mole, right? Like you expect the second mole to, <laughs> to pop up at some point. Apparently, it still managed to catch him off guard. I didn't necessarily love the way that Classic played Mass Gateway there. I feel like it's strong, but there's really no reason to play that greedily. Like, he could have popped down at least a second Robo facility. He was super late on the first Robo. I think he could have at least popped down a second Robo facility and just make uh, Immortal Arco, right? I don't think you necessarily need Skytals, but yeah, going Skytals also would have been an option. But fighting pure Lurker, essentially, pure Lurker Hydra with Link support, with gateway units is, I don't know. Like, he decided to go Storm. I mean, honestly, it, Storm would have been fine too. Any of the, <laughs> honestly, any of the Proto strategies would have been fine, other than banking up thousands of resources and, well, not shutting down the Nidus Worms. Anyways, now we find ourselves on Alcyone. Once again, very similar setup compared to the previous game. I'm hoping for Rogue's sake that this time around he's not going to be caught with the drone transfer down towards the third base. That would be right around this section of the map. There's the Twilight Council, the Fortune. Well, which look at that. The robotics facility. I think if Classic decided to do that much damage early on, or if he managed to deal that much damage in the previous game, rather than putting down a fourth Nexus, I think it would have been totally fine just doing a three, three base all-in. Just... Robo facility, eight gateways, blink with plus one. I think that would have been the end of it. Oracle swooped in once more, by the way. I missed them killing three drones, but... I think they could commit. Okay, yeah, he's a little bit afraid. Are the oracles going to help out the adepts? Eventually they will. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot better right here for Rogue. It's a lot better. He's droning super heavily on the back of this, too. Ooh, it's charged first. Okay. Classic making a bit of a deviation. I think he's looking at that previous build that Rogue went for. It was a really quick Hydra then, together with plus one missile. That sort of strategy should not be particularly great against, well, Zealots and any sort of robo base style. So be it Colossus or be it even Disruptors at this stage in the game, I think if Classic is going up against the exact same strategy from the Zerg once again, he should be able to walk all over it. Okay. No Evo Chamber yet. Oh, we do have an Evo Chamber. He just didn't start up an upgrade. Okay. I was going to say, 
That's a bit of a deviation from the previous game. Are we gonna go Hydra then once more? We'll have to see here in just a moment. There's the lair. There's the plus one. And there is apparently a dead oracle. I caught the tail end of it. Yeah, it's gonna be Colossi, by the way, for Protoss here. Together with the extended thermal lens. Ooh. Really? Ah, okay. So, I thought Classic was ready to play a pretty aggressive match. And then he goes for a fourth Nexus, which throws me off a little bit. And then he goes for a second Stargate and a Fleet Beacon. So this is Classic doing one of those strategies that he did do quite a bit in the past. But that Zerg players at the highest level have been able to shut down relatively comfortably as of late. So this is a super tech heavy style. He's going into Colossi, he's going into what will likely be a fleet beacon into Colo or sorry, into uh, the Mama ship together with carriers, maybe some Tempest, right? Like he will just get all of the expensive units. And it's gonna be fantastic, assuming Classic manages to stay alive for like another four minutes or so, but there is a gigantic timing window for Zerg to deal a lot of damage. Rogue though, well, not having seen all of those games that Classic has played, I'm sure, over the last year or two, there's a good chance that he hasn't really... Yeah, spotted what most of the other top-level Zergs like to do. So, this is him going... Okay, very tech-heavy too. So, apparently he's meeting the Protoss head-on. So, he did scout with an Overseer what happened, right? So, he knows exactly what is going on inside of the main base. He's gonna actually double-check as well whether or not it's gonna be carriers or a mothership or whatever. He'll be happy to know that it's gonna be carriers here. Zerk has also decided to go Hive. He's going second Evo Chamber. We have a Spire. We have a Lurker then. So, Rogue apparently is gonna just... Meet Classic in the middle, and he is ready to play a big macro game himself. Skipping that base at the 6 o'clock position in favor of the Golden Minerals, I kind of like it. Hmm. Very decisive action here from Rogue. So, once upon a time, Really, before Serral ascended to, uh, you know, his godhood, um, once upon a time, Rogue's late game was considered to be best in class. I haven't really seen him play late game, so I have no idea where it is right now. I mean, I've seen him play a lot of game, late game lately, or <laughs> a lot of late game historically, rather, but obviously not late game lately. Because, well, he hasn't really played a lot of games comparatively to these other guys, but... Apparently he's feeling like he is capable of taking on one of the best Protoss players playing a long drawn out macro match. Here's the thing. If you watch mostly Protoss vs Zerg late game on, for example, my channel, it'll mostly be Zerg players like Raynor, like Serral, like Dark. Right? Those are also the only Zergs that seem to consistently win in the late game against Protoss. And they make it look pretty easy. They actually do make it look pretty lopsided in favor of the Zerg. However, it seems that practically every other Zerg player below their level, aka practically every other Zerg, doesn't like playing late game against Protoss very much. As a matter of fact, a lot of players, a lot of pro gamers are currently saying, and I don't really know exactly how much truth there is to this, but a lot of pro gamers are saying that late game PvZ is now actually Protoss favored. Now, we gotta put a little asterisk right next to that, because I haven't really seen that. It's not really something that... Ooh, Mass Corruptor is actually really quite powerful. Storm, hello? We need Storm, Storm, Storm! Storm! Do we not... Oh, we don't have it yet! Sonic Storm is done right now! Oh, this timing here for Rogue is... <sighs> Absolutely brutal. Absolutely brutal. We were seconds away from finishing Sonic Storm. I think he must have missed a Chrono Boost or two. Oh, suddenly swooping in with a whole load of Corruptors and, well, killing two carriers is actually huge. Problem is that it's gonna be difficult to expand off of this now. He can try and sneak out an expansion over there, but that is a really lovely catch right now for Rogue. Getting those units, that's an interesting swoop in too, by the way. He didn't go for any Vipers or any of those abductions, I guess. Just, yeah, straight up Corruptors. If the opponent does not have Archons and he does not have Storm, it's actually a doable style. Hmm. Okay. Anyways, we'll have to find out together exactly what Protoss late game currently looks like. When it is not one of those three Zergs that I mentioned earlier.
It's actually kind of fascinating though, because a big circling swell right now going across the map. And they're going to be easily able to kill that base, even though they are currently unupgraded. Save for Adrenal Glance and Link Speed. That's so funny, because Adrenal Glance here finished up before plus one. Like, plus one is actually super late. Corruptors, once again, finding a Colossus. And they back off. They will regenerate over time. Hmm. Anyways, what I was going to say, it's kind of funny in a way how the dynamic of PvZ works. Because most of the time, like I said, most of the time against, like, your average pro gamer, right? <laughs> That almost sounds mean, but you get what I'm trying to say. Against your average full-time StarCraft player, Protoss players in the late game will play relatively passively. So they will do what Classic is doing right now, just sort of defending their bases and slowly turtling up towards the state where they can mine out their side of the map. However, whenever we see those same Protosses play this passive of a late game against, for example, Serral, they get absolutely demolished. So they find themselves in this weird spot where they actually try to be aggressive off of a, a strategy that's supposed to be played quite passively. It changes the entire dynamic of the late game up. Looks like Classic though is more than happy to just play, yeah, straight up turtle in this game. Skipping basically most of the early game and most of the mid game too, and he just decided to go straight into the late game. And impressively enough, apparently Rogue is feeling like he can meet this hat on. Yeah, he's making spore crawlers at home. Look at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's starting up a wall of spore crawlers. So he droned up pretty much to like triple digit workers. He's going to make a wall of spore crawlers all around the map. Again, not really something that we've seen much as of late, right? Against mass carrier armies. This used to be what Zerg players did a lot. The fact that we don't see any vipers in his unit composition is throwing me off a little bit though. Okay, well, Spore Crawlers finish up at the perfect moment. Yeah. Nicely done right here by a rogue. That was a scary moment, though, because I wonder if maybe Classic could have committed, because those lurkers were very clumped up. Maybe if he had a prism or something, he could come in and find an angle to storm? I think that was an opportunity. Mothership is going to be coming up here momentarily. Second Spire coming up as well for the Zerk. We already had a... A second, there you go, second cybernetic score as well for Classic. He really needs to start double upgrading. There we go. You love to see it. Okay. Yep, these lurkers are really controlling most of the terrain, and now a Viper is coming up. There's the second uh, upgrade started as well here for Rogue for his... Uh, or I guess the third upgrade actually already for his flying units. Gold base will be acquired and the same can be said for that expansion with the rich Vespian Geyser in the top left hand corner of the map. Okay. I'm actually so excited to see how this plays out. Because this is not looking like a game that is going to end anytime soon. Normally, it's the Protoss who is quite passive at this stage, and this is actually quite a passive approach, even though he's on his opponent's creep. The thing is, Classic now knows that a rogue will not fight him without static defense present. So he can march around the perimeter of the creep relatively easily. It becomes worrisome as soon as there are Vipers out and these units get punished, but when there are no Vipers available, yeah, Protoss can march around the map just like this. Look at him, getting rid of a load of creep. And when he finds an angle, he will go after the spore crawlers too. Yeah, this may just be an angle. Okay. Interceptors, by the way, those little ships that fly around the carrier are 15 minerals each. 1-5. So they're quite pricey. It's not like you can just fly those around and regenerate them for free. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not like pricey, I guess, but it is something that adds up over the course of the game. There have been many games where Protoss run uh, runs out of cash because they got a little too carried away with their carriers. Maybe that's the reason why they're called carriers, huh? Anyways, Tempest coming up right now. I think Tempests are an excellent choice, especially if we go for the Tempest upgrade. In combination with Revelation. Oh my God, I'm rhyming a lot today, haven't I? In combination with Revelation, you can use the Tempest with the... Okay, yeah, anyways, uh, you can use the Tempest to shoot at their maximum range. Subscribe to my SoundCloud. Do people still use SoundCloud? Did I just say a boomer thing? 
I may have just said a boomer thing. All right. Uh, there it is. The tectonic destabilizers. There's your caster flex for today. Good abduction right there, but nice feedbacks as well, though. A buy classic, getting rid of a lot of those important spell casters. Vipers have been added into the mix, but so have infestors. Fungal? No fungal. Okay. Okay. The dance continues over here. Classic is not really wanting to commit too much. I think Classic is okay as long as he mines out most of his side of the map. So that's what he's aiming for right now. Taking this expansion over here on the right together with the one in the top left. Oh yeah, 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 that's a lot of photon cannons. <laughs> Little bit of unburrowing here. It's gonna force a Protoss unit to move on over in that direction. Okay, Corruptors once again finding a spot. Not bad. Yeah, without without an Oracle, it's quite difficult to play this unit composition. So he's adding on another one. There is still one, I think, from the early game. Okay. The rocks here will get destroyed. And there's the Greater Spire morphing in right now for Rogue. He will be prepared with a... Say he, for example, overmakes Corruptors, since Corruptors are purely air-to-air, -air, he will be prepared against a mass ground transition too. There's the Mothership Abduction, Time Warp, double abduction, okay. That is gonna be the end of that, so... Minus 300, minus 300 for... The Mothership. Not Mothership, loco. Mothership. There you go. Moth... There's TH in the middle of that word. Mothership. There you go. Nailed it. Mothership. Nice. For some reason, that's a difficult one for me. Mutter, mutter ship. <laughs> Maybe I should just always call it mama ship instead. Yeah, I think that's probably a better idea. That way I uh, avoid the issue entirely. Look at Big Daddy Immortal now. Getting rid of any changeling that he sees. There's one right in front of you, buddy. Okay. Yeah, abducting whatever. I think abducting units into the spore crawlers and the corruptors is an excellent way of doing it. Same right now for these immortals, for example, right? Any of these units can get killed pretty easily by the Zerg. Anything that gets abducted here will get destroyed by this particular setup. So as long as the vipers find you, you're gonna die. Now, apparently, classic. Ooh, I don't think you want to commit here, dude. Into a choke point, into a concave of lurkers. Oh, good feedbacks. Lovely feedbacks. I don't think this is the angle. Maybe I'm mistaken, Classic, but I am... Mm. I mean, he's got Revelation, right? So basically what he's trying to do is he's trying to use those golden balls of energy to deal damage to the structures. So the Tectonic Destabilizers is an upgrade that was added a couple of years ago that effectively doubles the damage that Tempest do to structures by two. Or it doubles it by two. Anyways, you get what I'm trying to say. It increases it by 100%, just to make it more confusing for everybody. It's, um, it's a very powerful tool. So the idea is that since Tempest can shoot away further than they can see, if you use Revelation on the Spore Crawlers from the Oracle, and then use the Tempest to shoot at their maximum range, you can technically prevent stalemates. So in the past, we've seen some stalemates for this exact setup right here for the Zerg. Still not easy, obviously, for the Protoss, but at least now they do have an answer. Look at the banks, by the way, for both of these players. Here's the army value in the top left and corner, too. Army value is looking absolutely massive. So, yeah, that is both players just trying their very best to... Not just have this unit composition right here, but also one that they can remax with a little bit later. And obviously, Zerk is very quick to remax. Classic is maybe going to need some production structure for that sort of thing, too. Yeah, three Stargates? I wouldn't mind seeing him go up to five, but anyways. Okay, some good fungal growths right here by Rogue. Man, Rogue is actually... Look at him, Microbial Shroud now against those uh, Interceptors. Rogue is actually playing so freaking good. Good. 
It almost pains me a little bit because I played a lot of late game Zerk against Protals and I can never get it to work. Literally years of me struggling and bashing my head against Skytals. I've never been able to reliably win against it. And then you have a man who probably barely played for a year and a half. And he somehow makes it look... Well, I mean, he's not in a game demanding position by any stretch. I also don't know if he's comfortable here, but... He's making it look like he can hold his own, is what I'm trying to say. So... The reason, I guess, as to why a lot of these late games do get pretty tricky for Zerg players, and why most of the guys below, like the very best, struggle with late game Zerg against Protoss, is because of the spellcasters. So controlling the infestors and the vipers, and making sure your corruptors don't clump up against the archons, and making sure your spore crawlers are in the right position, and get your lurkers burrowed, and maybe mix in night display or dropper lords. Like there are so many moving pieces, that it's super easy to accidentally make a mistake and lose all of your stuff. Now, obviously, likewise, it's very, very easy for Protoss to make similar mistakes. Don't get me wrong whatsoever. It's just that in general, I think you can play this Protoss late game army with like two control groups with like 90% efficiency. Whereas for the late game Zerg army to be played with 90% efficiency, you're probably going to need at least four. So it just, it's a bit lopsided. That's not necessarily a bad thing at all, by the way. Like, the game asymmetrically is obviously always going to be designed a little bit differently like that. Storm drops coming in at the 22 minute mark. Lovely stuff. Anyways, in order to play this Protoss late game army really well, it is super hard. Like, those last 10 percentage points or so are requiring a half dozen hotkeys. It's... Like, you kind of want the Oracles to have a separate hotkey, you want the Tempest to have a separate hotkey, you want the Mothership to have a separate hotkey, because otherwise it gets abducted. You need these Archons underneath the carriers, you need the High Templar leading the army, obviously the High Templar also need a separate hotkey. So it's super easy to make mistakes here for Protoss too. So at the highest level, I actually think it's uh, pretty darn even. But as a ladder hero, if you're below the pro level, you probably know what I'm talking about. I'm just kidding. All of my viewers are professional gamers, obviously. <laughs> all 50 to 100,000 or so of you that usually watch these videos these days, all of you are grandmasters, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Now, there's technically only ever a maximum of 600 grandmasters in StarCraft 2 at a time. Usually it's closer to like 500, maybe 400 or so, but anyways, that's besides the point. A couple nice abductions here once again by Rogue. Ooh, nice fungals there as well, by the way. Man, how is he controlling this so well already? Ooh, we have a mass, yeah, jump right now with the Corruptors. What the pro gamers unironically refer to as the Loco Maneuver, even though I did not invent that. I do feel, I actually take a lot of pride in the fact that there is a StarCraft maneuver named after me, even though I did not invent it at all. And look at this! Suddenly Rogue sees an opportunity and he grabs it with both hands. He realized the lack of Storm, he realized the lack of Archons. And it was an opportunity for him to jump in. Is there Storm available? No, these Templar do not have enough energy. Rogue absolutely smashes the Skytel's army. Hi, yi yi Rogue. My man, that's insane, though. Just... This is this is him within a week. Maybe a week and a half. Of him coming back from the military. What in the world? That looks so clean. So he did lose a bunch of Corruptors, by the way, but... 23 is certainly a phenomenal trade. The aesthetic, the... Or, sorry, the production here will be remade as well. I wonder if maybe Rogue can kind of push the issue here. The thing is, Protoss right now is kind of broke, right? I mean, broke in the sense that they can't really make a lot of stuff very quickly. So he's got a lot of money, but no way of spending it. Roke is going to be able to remax 17 times over before... So this is really lovely work, actually, by Classic. I really like this. This is Classic trying to buy time. This Prism is on a one-way trip, and he knows it. We all love him for it. He is just here to be a distraction. To get those carriers and Tempest out.
Great engagement right there from Rogue, but no real follow-up. I would have loved to see a bunch of Brute Lords from this area going into that section of the map. Or maybe a, an attack over here to this northern base. Because ultimately, if Classic mines 50% of the map, I think he's gonna feel pretty good about it all. If you look at the money available right now for both players, despite the fact that Classic just lost a tremendous amount of stuff, Rogue still actually has less resources in the bank. This base has been mining for quite a while already. Uh, still up to like 1500 minerals though in some of these mineral fields, so... It's not like it's gonna run out anytime soon, but... That is one of those fights where your heart stops for just a moment. I actually think Brute Lords are missing in his unit composition for Rogue. So he is... Well, I mean, he is gonna be able to kill this eventually. Recall? What are we recalling? The entire Protoss Ball that we have? Dangerous, very dangerous! Okay, Mama Ship activates the Cloaking Upgrade. Microbial Shroud unironically being used once again here by Rogue. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. Corruptors and Vipers added into the mix. Little bit of a Zealot Warping in the main base. I mean, these are properly upgraded Zealots. Full upgrades, actually, across the board for Protals. We're missing plus three melee for the Zerg, which actually I think should be researched, because there are opportunities to, like, make a bunch of Ultralisks as well. I think Ultralisk would also not be a bad addition here to try and harass these outer bases. So I think Roke is doing a great job fighting the main army. Look at him, once again, just punishing Classic for very sloppy mistakes. But one thing that Rogue is not doing is really getting rid of that Protoss economy, and that's an issue. More Microbial Shrouds all over the screen. Yeah, that is a gigantic issue actually here for Rogue. Because you may win these fights, these straight up engagements, reasonably well. Look at this. Look at the resources lost. Whoa, okay. Significantly more lost here by Classic. So Rogue has won basically every fight up to this point. Every fight in the late game anyways. But then the bank does not reflect that. Obviously gas is the more important resource, but... I don't think the uh, 1000 or so gas difference is gonna make up for the 9000 or so mineral difference. It's, it's, no, it's a little much. Classic can run around with a, a whole load of zealots and still be extremely obnoxious. Rogue, of course, did spend a ton of cash. Yeah, look at this. He's probably made, like, upwards of, like, a hundred spore crawlers this game. He spent a lot of his money onto those spores. and It's making it difficult for Classic to maneuver around the map. Classic trying to re-secure one of these bases in the top left. I think this mineral line should really be taken, though, by Rogue here. I think he believes that he's rich and he's never gonna run out of money, but... We've seen it happen many times as of late. Yeah, so one recent introduction, right, to the Zerg meta, I suppose. Relatively recent. Within the last year and a half or so. Actually, hold that thought. Classic, maybe thinking about making a move. Okay, we have the cloaking once again activated. Microbial shrouds already put down. Nice feedback right there by Classic. Okay. Yeah, lovely, lovely work right here by the Protoss. Not really getting a whole lot of value here. Is the Zerg, anyways. Okay, looks like sport crawlers are moving from the back closer to the front. He wants to get more of those vipers, but where are they? Ah, oh, yeah, they're completely out of energy right now, which is lovely. Only four infestors as well, by the way. Okay, he does find a bit of an opportunity. Archons, not really capable of getting underneath, and those storms were beautiful. Okay, Classic has started a bit of a slow push. In the meantime, though, no, upon realizing that Rogue was going to have a hard time with this section, he decides to go for a bit of a counter-attack towards the gold base, or whatever is left over of it. Only 71 minerals remain. He's gonna, at the very least, draw Classic's attention away for a bit. That'll help the Zerg player accumulate some more energy and apparently get some regeneration from the Queens on the Corruptors. Okay. Yeah, Classic is actually carving a bit of a path over here, though. The only thing I don't like for Classic is the fact that he's at 179 supply. With 25,000 minerals and gas in the bank. Can we uh, make some units, Classic? 
It'd be really unfortunate if you lose the fight because you simply weren't maxed. Okay, there we go. He's gonna round out his unit composition with more of the same. <laughs> Storm's coming in from the back. Hi, Templar, though, pretty far away. There's the cloaking activated on the mama ship once more. Archon's coming across too. I think they cut themselves from that section of the map straight through the fight into that Corruptor Bowl. Seven carriers now on the production tab. Look at that. Ay ay ay. You don't really see that all too frequently. Okay. I think Classic needs to back off for a little bit. It's easy to look at your supply count right now and think you're maxed. But obviously you've already paid for the supply right here that those carriers are taken up. And that is a very decent chunk of your army in the end. So what I was trying to say earlier... One of the relatively recent introductions to the Zerg meta in this matchup is to go Brute Lords together with Lurkers. So, in the past it always used to be either Lurkers or Brute Lords, because in a way they're both like anti-ground siege units, right? In a way they kind of fulfill the same role. But the top level Zergs have really gotten a lot of value out of playing both Brute Lords as well as Lurkers, because, for example, harassing some of these outer bases, Lurkers can't really do very well, but Brute Lords can, because they have more range. That is one of my criticisms here of Rogue, and it's a relatively small thing and something that I'm sure he will start incorporating soon. Because he has a Greater Spire, he made it, he's got full upgrades. It's just something he's not really thinking about doing at this point. I'm very surprised we haven't seen this base taken yet. The fact that that base is completely on mind this entire game long, and the same for this one right over here. It's kind of crazy to me. So Rogue obviously made a ton of spore crawlers and effectively reduced his worker count, so he doesn't have a lot of drones. But, I mean, look at the gas cost of this army for the Zerk at the moment. 8,500 gas caught up in the current standing army of the Zerk, and he's got 4,500 gas in total. He's actually gonna run out. Like, with a big clash between these armies, that's the only thing that can really go terribly wrong right here for Rogue, I think. Well, that, and I guess just having a terrible fight. <laughs> All right, Classic, making some good moves though. I really like what Classic has been doing here. Constantly dancing on the perimeter. It looks like a bunch of those Corruptors are gonna take a massive beating, but they did find, ooh, a couple carriers at least. Corruptors do regenerate out of combat, but relatively slowly. Classic is using up a lot of the minerals that he's been gathering and rebuilding those interceptors. I wouldn't mind seeing a sneaky prism go around the map too, by the way, to do like a cheeky little warp in to distract the Zerg. Big fungal! Big fungal on all of the Templar! Do we have a follow-up? Nope, no real follow-up, so the Templar will actually live, but not without using some feedbacks. Oh, well, most of them lived anyways. The mass amounts of spore crawlers that were built in this game so far yeah, a lot of them have gone down. 57 killed Spore Crawlers in this game here. That is actually kind of hilarious. That is not something we usually see. So, effectively what has taken place right now is that Classic mined out most of the half of the map, right? So obviously he did mine this base some time ago too. And Rogue has not really mined quite as much. Which is a weird situation. Like, right now, he's starting to pull ahead here. Look at this very downward slope over here on the income advantage. That's fascinating. The reason why Classic doesn't have more income anymore is simply because, well, he's run out. He has no more mineral fields to mine, meaning that he has to win the game with what he's got right now. Or, I guess, try to secure this expansion. I think that's pretty much a no-brainer, actually. If you still have a bunch of probes, may as well go ahead and give it a shot. Gas, still the most important resource. So getting that rich Vespian Geyser. Honestly, you could even build a Nexus over here just to, like, mine the gas. I don't think he needs more minerals, actually. I wouldn't mind seeing a Nexus over here just to get the gas geyser. He could put all 14 probes for all I care, or, like, 6 probes in there. And, like, build the Nexus over there, return it. I don't think he'd actually need the minerals, but... Anyways. In the meantime, though, Classic still has got his Butcher's Knife out. He's just carving up whatever he can hit. And it seems like Roke is struggling, fighting this Protoss army straight up. I'm actually starting to be a little bit concerned here for Roke, because... I mean, he's got, quote-unquote, only 21 Spore Crawlers. 
We have seen so many of them go down. Hmm. Okay, well the resources are being ga uh, being ga carried right now, Rotter. Apparently. Ga garried? There you go. I, I put a G in there somewhere. Hydra's at this stage in the game, not quite that great. Zealots apparently backing up to the safety of the... Like they cannot be replaced, right? Backing up to the safety right there of that shield battery. Okay. Well, Classic has a massive army. So, I really like what Classic has been doing in this game. Other than the miss rallies, right? So we've seen a bunch of really significant errors and I think... Ooh, here, big time warp once again. I think he made a bunch of mistakes not mixing in uh, the Archons early enough and... Well, delayed on that Storm upgrade. At this point, like a half hour ago. That, those were mistakes for sure. Plus, we've seen a lot of units just sloppily getting picked up for free. Really, really silly, honestly. That seems to happen quite a bit at this level, which... It's one of the mistakes I uh, hope we can eliminate over the next year or so, because seeing free units that are just trying to make their way towards the, uh, the, the Protoss army go down is quite frustrating. Once again, no microbial strat over here. We have uh, a cheeky little fungal growth too. Classic once again backs off, allows those carriers to rebuild their interceptors. The next mothership is coming up. Tempest are on the production tab too. 12 probes is all that he's got. But you know what? Classic is mining again. Yeah. And that has tapered off the income advantage here for Roke a little bit. Okay. Good abduction there. Yeah, Roke really needs to be harpooning those units around. Harpoon them with the Viper. Bring them towards the Corruptors and then reel them in. It does still feel a little awkward, right? Looking at this late game army. It's a very different approach than what Terrans like to do, for example, in the late game. I would love to see an aggressively used mothership. Like, especially when you're going up against this many spore crawlers, I think it'd be really cool to see the mothership trying to sneak by the spore crawler line and then, like, do a mass recall, right? Towards, like, I don't know, one of the sections of the Zerk that the Zerk doesn't easily have access to. Into a choke point, up a ramp, that sort of thing. Okay, Roke has decided that he wants to get rid of that base. He could have mined that base himself. Actually, he could have just taken that base ages ago. He decided that he wasn't going to need it. And I wonder if he's regretting that right now as we do have a nice time work once again. Loads of microbial shrouds this game, by the way. Really cool. But in a very strange way... Even though Rogue has more money right now than his opponent, and even though his army is still very significant, in a very strange way, this is feeling uncomfortable for the Zerk. Like, he doesn't really have that much anymore. He's slowly being pushed in. We have a Link Bane run by over here. Okay, fair enough. I don't think he really cares. Bane links are actually quite expensive at this stage in the game. Yeah, Classic is taking it easy. There's only two Vipers available for the Zerg. So obviously these Protoss units can get abducted pretty well. But yeah, Classic just tiptoeing around. Okay, we see a couple abductions, but... That's a Viper going down. Mothership also does fall, though. I almost feel like Classic should just make a move and attack. Because he's been tiptoeing around for a while, and if I look at this army here... This Protoss army is gonna demolish the Zerg, isn't it? The only thing that's kind of lacking is a few more Archons. I really would like to see maybe like five, six Archons or so. So, uh, the Archons ultimately prevent the Corruptors from running in. The Corruptors just jumping on his army. Oh my god, actually, Roke is gonna be the one who's making the move. Classic has been baiting this out for a while. Got some decent storms down. Not a lot of uh, Infestor energy anymore, not a lot of Viper energy either. I think Classic is going to take the fight here momentarily. I think he has to. He doesn't want to lose that base. And I think he's got the much superior army at this point. Okay, here we go. 
Interceptors are gonna try and deploy, and now pretty much all of them are out. I think you chase. Yeah, the Corruptor Bow is just not cutting it. Four Ultralisks are coming up. Ultras can be really strong, but I, I, I'm wondering if they're a little too late. Oh my god. The good old Mass Carrier Bow. We have 16 carriers. Yeah. Those units are very powerful at this stage in the game. I don't usually love unit comps that are mostly carriers, or really just mostly one unit in general. But uh, in this particular instance, I think it makes a lot of sense. Now, seven Ultras are coming. I think Ultras are a good choice, but they're also a very expensive one. Problem with Ultras... ...is that they cost a lot of gas and they don't shoot up, right? But one thing they do do very well is kill all of the ground units. So if the Ultras manage to get on top of the Archons, the Immortals, and the High Templar, they will chop them down. At which point a mass amount of Corruptors, like for example 51 of them, didn't realize we had quite that many, can swoop in and kill all of the carrier. Or yeah, all of the carriers, the Mothership, the Tempest, and all the rest of it. Rogue has actually done a really good job just keeping these units split up and making it look like there aren't that many. Oh my god. Well, if you're fighting into that army, though, like that, yeah, no. The Interceptors are gonna be tickling the, uh, the Ultralisks, but the Immortals are really good, and I love this. What little bit of supply is available, Classic is uh, spending right now on more Immortals. Immortals are the ultimate counter in the late game to Ultras. Okay. Ooh, my god, that guy flew 17 miles away. Rogue still punishing mistakes. Now we're getting to a point, though, where, yeah, Classic is gonna be pulling ahead as far as the income goes. Because there's very little money available anymore for Rogue. He's mined out essentially everything that he's got. This map is actually gonna be fully mined out very soon. Rogue is smashing his piggy bank. All right, getting Burrow. Don't know if he has Neural Parasite. No, it does not look like it, but uh, I don't think that's really his main concern. Although Neural Parasite is always a, a scary thing. Immortals, finding a bit of an angle. We do have Microbial Shroud over here, reducing some more of that damage. Time Warp does go down. It looks like a lot of the ground units, though, for the Protal still remain, and that means that these Stormy Boys can get some damage done. How many Oracles do we have underneath? Honestly, nobody knows until I switch on over to that tap. Those Storms are amazing, though. And I think the Corruptors are gonna get... Yeah, they're gonna get wiped out. They just went extinct. GG is cold. Wow. Classic in one of the most patient games of StarCraft 2 that I have ever seen obtains the victory in game number two. Okay. And that means that we are going to need the third map in this best of three series. And that one will be played on site. Delta. I fast-forwarded once again through the first two minutes of the game because everything is super normal. We have Classic going for that low ground expansion. I'm assuming there's going to be a third hatchery here taken by the Zurich momentarily. Could be this little drone right over here. Ah, uh, it could have been that one. Usually that's the 28th drone that you make and you rally that one over. But apparently it wasn't meant to be. The 28th supply drone, that is. Third Queen coming up, and that means that Rogue will be building an Overlord here at 33 Supply. All of this, very, very normal. Stargate start here once again for Classic. Ooh, really? You fired up an Oracle for just a moment and then cancelled it and decided to go into the Phoenix instead. Okay. Phoenix openers in current day and age StarCraft are considered to be quite weak. One of the problems that you run into with like Mass Phoenix, for example, is the fact that taking an extra expansion is quite tricky. So Protoss players have figured out with Oracles, hey, I can take a third Nexus at like 345 safely every time. But if you play Phoenixes, you end up with, yeah, a very vulnerable base. So it's actually Phoenix into Oracle. Okay. So I guess we're just using it for a little bit of Overlord killing. This is the first Overlord I would imagine that Rogue made in this game. Yep, and the Queens are going to be able to push that back pretty easily. This one, though, is in some trouble. Sorry about that, buddy. 
Here's the Link counterattack, but I guess the defensive Oracle here is going to be quite nice. One thing I guess that Classic did achieve is that that Scouting Overlord is now gone. And maybe there's a chance that that allows this one over here, the Oracle, to come in and swoop a couple of those drones to death. But I think it's quite predictable, yeah. Beautiful defense here this time around from Rogue. Gonna be a Twilight Council on the back of this here for Classic. Oracle trying to find some damage at the third. Not really achieving that much. Ay ay ay. Honestly, so far, this early game hit from Classic has fallen flat on its face. Resonating Glaives. Okay, well... I think a Glaives follow-up is really strong when Zerg has made a bunch of errors. So say, for example, we have that game number one, you kill a dozen workers early on, suddenly hitting them in the face with glaives, pretty much game winning. Okay, I was gonna say, if you don't deal any damage early on, and you go for glaives, you will find that Zerg has far more attacking units than you're comfortable with. So that kind of felt to me like Classic was playing into the arms of Rogue. He's cancelled the uh, glaives research and decides to go into Blink instead. Lair's gonna finish up a little earlier here too, compared to the previous games, and it looks like the Evo Chamber will be finishing up right now as well. We should be seeing the plus one missile, roach speed, and then a bunch of unit production. Okay. Stasis Ward in the main base. Oh, don't lose the Oracle. All right. Brenda and Karen. Both of them get to spend a little bit of time in stasis together. Isn't that beautiful? There's the Hydra then once again. Very quick Hydra dance here actually from a rogue, all things considered. In all the games so far, seems like he's a fan. Just good old Roach Hydra. Templar Archives, a robo facility here for the Protoss player. And then I'm assuming we're gonna add on a whole lot of gateways here eventually too. This is once again gonna bring him up to six. In the previous games, he decided to go for a pretty quick fourth Nexus as well. I wonder if Zerk could punish that at all with an opener like this. Because Hydras, sure, take a lot of damage from Storm. But Roaches don't really care. And when you have Hydras with speed, you can kind of micro out of it pretty easily too. If Protoss' main defense is the Storm. So yeah, I think Rogue scouting for this 6 o'clock base over here is really quite clever. Because, uh, clever rather, because he doesn't... He doesn't know exactly what to expect. There we go. Okay, so Classic is taking the base over here on the right side. So it is once again a six gate fourth base. There's Storm. That Templar Archives was already finished a while ago though. Immortal coming up. I think he cancelled something here too and then decided to go for the Immortal instead. Okay, second Robo facility coming up too. Observer. Ooh, just barely manages to escape death. This is gonna be a scary attack. I think Rogue's army here is looking massive. Hydras don't really have any upgrades other than ranged. I think speed is a bit of a no-brainer here, but Storm is not even remotely done yet. And if the Hydras get within range, this actually could deal so much damage. Because right now we have a bunch of those Templar, but they don't deal any... Like, they're just sending here. They could maybe shoot some water balloons or feed back a, uh, I don't know, an Overseer. Suddenly, this attack right here from Rogue is dealing so much damage. Imagine if he brought the Queens. I think he could have brought the Queens. The way that the Creed threat is this far forward? Maybe he doesn't need it. Excellent little attack right here from Rogue. Yeah, I think this Nexus is dead if he clicks it anyways. It will be gone. Storm was just a bit too late. He had the Templar Archives, he just didn't start the research. Getting punished for those mistakes immediately. Now keep in mind though, Classic does have another Nexus. And this is effectively a three hatch all in right here for Rogue. So it's not like he's got a massive economy on the back of this, but... You can really layer on these attacks as the Zerg, right? Like, right now, sure, this was the first attack. But there's a chance he's gonna come back with even more in another minute or two. Now, Classic does clear out all of the expensive units though. That is nice. Yeah, 12 Ravagers down is a lot. I think he needs to warp in New Templar ASAP, yeah. New High Templar, we need more energy for Storms. 
Okay. Rogue has actually just decided to double down, it looks like. There's no vision here for Classic of the Saturation at the 4th. So he doesn't know if he should be preparing against an all-in. I think if he knew, he would be very cautious making additional probes and another Nexus. Classic, you need to scout. You need to see whether or not there's a lot of drones over at that base up north. Because there aren't. There's a few drones that are being transferred here. But this is an extended 3 base all-in right now from Rogue. Yeah, I think cancelling this is the only thing you need to do. You need to make sure you get a massive army here. But as far as this base goes, you can only cancel it. You can't fight for it. He's chronoing out as many immortals as possible. That's nice. But here goes Rogue with another... Yeah, it's like a wedding cake, you know? He's got another layer. It's got another step. This time around, there will be Storm. Good first Storm. Good second Storm. Okay. Oh my god, Rogue. Big storms here, but it's basically the only damage. Yeah, it, it's the only damage in this unit composition. There's no charge or anything along those lines. The Templar are taking a beating. Okay, they do morph into Archons here. Is this an overextension from Rogue in the end? Maybe a little bit. Yeah, maybe a little bit. His economy is nothing to write home about, so he's forced to double down with this push. Rogue did, by the way, kill most of the static defense here, which is usually not very significant, but if you want to continue attacking... Oh, now the queens show up. Yeah, you guys are a little late. Hello? We heard there was a party on the side of the Protoss? Yeah, Brenda. Let's get you back to your creep. You're a little late for the party, dude. That party was yesterday. Wouldn't mind seeing Overlord speed and a couple of drop alerts. I think it would be a really powerful play. All right, Classic still trying to get these Immortals going. He's got a lot of energy for Chrono Boost, actually. Ooh, dude, we've got, like... We've got so much energy for Chrono, Classic. I think you Chrono literally anything, but especially Immortals. Oh, he's not using it. That surprises me a little bit, honestly. He just needs to get more units out. I thought Nexus is irrelevant. There were a lot of drones, by the way, transferred to that base up north. But it's still just 61 workers here in total for the Zerg. Classic. We have like 400 energy. More. On those Nexi. There we go. Finally there's another Chrono Boost. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think what Classic is doing right now is just waiting for the Zerg to show him when he's gonna attack. And considering Rogue is effectively maxed out now, he's gonna try and use half of his army to fight on the left, half of his army on the right. That means that the base will likely have to be given up once again. Apparently Classic wants to split, he wants to see if he can win both fights at both fronts, and so far so good. Okay, you know what, that was actually really well done here. I was starting to look at this army from the Zerk, and considering it's like a 30 supply lead, it looked pretty much unstoppable, but... Okay, chasing this army down. Don't go too far. Do we have any storms available over here? We do not. There's no storms. There is no storms. Yeah, without storms, suddenly this army is pretty pathetic. Now the Zerk army on the right is once again swooping in. Bit of an old army hotkey, maybe? Templar? You guys do not have enough energy. Oh, no. They're gonna die right before they would get enough energy for another storm. There was a storm available on the right side, but that's another immortal going down. Rogue probably not entirely happy with how these fights are going, but I think he is still getting it done. That's that Nexus going down a second time. After, well, it getting cancelled about a half dozen times as well. Finally we go charge. Are we chronoing it? Not quite. Bunch of probes here, Miss rallied a little. They wanted to go down to the low ground, and maybe Rogue is gonna end up with a massive sandwich over here too, though. Look at this. No shield batteries over at this expansion anymore either, so that means it's just, oh my god, two Miss rallied immortals, classic. Oh, some very sloppy errors here from the Protoss player, and that ultimately forces him to GG out. 
And within about a week and a half of Rogue coming back from his mandatory military service, he takes down one of the world's greatest Protoss players in a fantastic series of StarCraft II. Insane. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please take the one second that it takes to hit the like button down below. It really does help. And of course, today I also want to give a special shout out to all of the Patreon supporters. Thank you very much for, well, allowing me to do what I do. For now, though, thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Don't forget to smile. And I hope to see you once again very soon for another video.